Lynn is a student at the precipice of her high school career. She's an elite in academics, the top of her class, and the newest student to attend a prestigious Thai school in hopes that one day, if she succeeds, she'll be able to study abroad in America. On her scholarship, she attends the school, and right away it's clear the tests are easy for her, no matter the stakes. But this isn't the case with everyone. Lynn soon becomes friends with Grace, a pretty girl from a privileged background whose family paid 400,000 baht so she could study there, a massive figure to Lynn, whose father is a middle-class teacher on a regular salary. When Grace proposes paying Lynn to help her with a math test, she feels she'll inevitably fail, a seed is planted that will change the course of her life, and not for the better. As the teacher sits at the front desk during exams, a series of tense interactions occur before Lynn writes her answers on an eraser and slips it to her friend through her shoe. It's a pretty riveting scene, and the editing helps to play up the sharp paranoia both students are experiencing. Soon, things begin to snowball. With the success of Grace's scores on her exam, she introduces Lynn to her boyfriend, Pat. And Pat, well, he's kind of a rich prick, and that only gets worse. But for now, he proposes a plan. If he and all of his friends can cheat off of Lynn's test, they'll pay her 3,000 baht each effectively turning her one-time discrepancy into an illegal cheating business, but a lucrative illegal cheating business. Lynn knows her dad's struggling. The scholarship she's on isn't covering the add-on fees that have piled up, and she doesn't want to burden her father anymore. So she agrees, and on the next big exam, things turn up a notch. I'll admit, here in the West I feel Thai film is very underrepresented. You don't hear much or see much from Southeast Asia in general, and if there is a film, it's usually something with Western affiliation, is a war film, or was ripped onto an old VHS tape that you fished out of a yard sale 25 cent bin at your grandmother's next door neighbor's house. So many of you probably haven't heard of this film. I hadn't either till I stumbled onto it on Netflix the other day. But if you love competition and you need a juicy thriller that isn't about killing a bunch of people or escaping from somewhere, this is a movie I implore you to check out. It's got great acting, the editing is fresh and extremely sharp, and the writing is watertight. The film takes that uncomfortable feeling of anxiety right before a big test and bottles that all up into two hours. And you know, it's surprisingly fun to see others try to figure out those kind of situations, especially since it isn't you this time around taking the test. I'm sure we've all gotten to question 26 on an exam and gone, oh shit, I don't know this, or I literally just forgot how to do this. And it's that sentiment that Bad Genius so effectively harnesses, dishing out a very relatable scenario. This is in part due to the nature of the plot, and also maybe unsurprisingly that this movie is inspired by true events. Prior to the film, SAT leaks occurred in China, South Korea, and other parts of the world, causing many scores to be cancelled and tests to be rescheduled. Considering this is the gateway to the world at large for many struggling students, it's no surprise that this kind of issue crops up again and again. In lieu of these events, Bad Genius takes this concept a step further, incorporating a scenario of systematic cheating into its premise, and it proves to fit the thriller element of the film perfectly. In the big exam with Pat and his friends, Lynn proposes a plan. She creates a certain code, displaying gestures of her hand which signal which answers to write, A, B, C, or D. These are derived from keys on a piano being played in a specific order, and with this, everyone involved begins to understand the rhythms and read her movements in the classroom. It's random enough no one outside of the circle will notice, but recognizable enough where the answers can be made out accordingly just from a simple hand gesture. That is, until a new challenger arrives in the form of Bank. Bank is alongside Lin in rankings, a top student of their school. But unlike her, he has never tolerated cheating of any kind. His mother runs a small laundromat, and his dream is to make it in school so he can give her a comfortable life in her twilight years. To him, every effort is due to work and ability. Success isn't just something you can pay your way to. He got here through just straight up hard work. He notes another student copying Lynn's test at the next big exam and reports him. Through a series of mishaps, Lynn is found out to be helping others cheat by the headmistress of the school, and a tense meeting between the two ensues, which ends with her losing a scholarship chance and her first entire tuition scholarship. Bank, in turn, is offered this scholarship as he is the other top student, but he's soon tracked down by thugs and beaten violently. 
He wakes up in a trash heap a day later, only to discover he's missed the scholarship exam deadline and a chance at making a better life for his mother. In his grief, he begins to reconsider his anti-cheating sentiment as Lynn continues making money from her cheating business. Now, this is probably as far as I dare to spoil the film, since I really think you should watch it. Some might feel that Bad Genius is an allegorical take on the idea that cheating equals bad and good equals hard work, and yes, I have to agree. In essence, this movie is telling the audience that if you cheat on this level, karma or this stalker from Resident Evil, I mean, this guy is this guy is literally crazy. Like, he goes to such lengths. It's, it's pretty funny, actually. But if you look a bit closer, I don't think the message is that simple. Take Bank, for instance. This dude has it rough. He's worked his way up from nothing, was always hardworking and honest, and I can't really blame him for exposing the cheating. I mean, if I had spent my entire life working to help my struggling family and getting into a good school just on merit alone, I wouldn't be too happy if a bunch of entitled rich kids paid their way to perfect scores with their parents' money when I had to fight tooth and nail to get there. Actually, it's pretty disgusting how corrupt and screwed up that really is. And so you might think the film rewards him for doing this, for standing up against the man and sticking it to the underhanded BS. But not exactly. Instead, this kid gets the snot beat out of him, misses his scholarship exam, and is left worse off than he started. The truth is that no one really wins in this movie. It's not about that. Bank didn't get punished because he was doing the right thing by reporting the cheating. He got beat up because when he exposed Lynn, he made a lot of enemies specifically all the people she was helping. And these enemies, unlike him, had money, resources, and a lot of people doing the dirty work for them. And over time, as Bank learns this, he begins to change and reshape his quiet, brooding, and harmless disposition. So overall, Bad Genius is an amazing film. I'm really glad I watched it. It has some pretty strong messaging about the brutality of academic pressure in the Eastern Hemisphere, something that I've always felt is a problem. I just feel that children shouldn't have the weight of heaven and earth on their shoulders to study all the time, and that a number on a placement test you took when you were 17 years old shouldn't have the ability to determine the rest of your life. I had the misfortune of taking the SAT on my birthday in high school, and you know what? I didn't think much of the whole experience, and neither did my instructors. I didn't even do that well in the test. I do think once someone gets to a certain point in their lives and they have enough experience, those scores just don't really matter anymore, wherever you are. After all, they don't use grades in the real world. I think kids should be allowed to be kids, and having a work-life balance is something that needs a bit more recognition not only in Asia, but everywhere with the education system. Of course, kids do need to learn things and understand the seriousness of getting prepared for adulthood. But it's easy to go too far with that concept and to forget that at the end of the day, these are just kids who want to be happy. We only live once as far as we know, shouldn't we make the best of it and enjoy our time? But those are my thoughts on the film. Easy recommendation for people who like to be on the edge of their seat. I'm curious, have you seen this movie or one like it? What are your thoughts on the exam culture in general and should standardized testing continue to have this weight? But let me know as always down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.